Welcome to another episode of Thrift Hunt. I am your host and hunter, WBK. I'm over here checking out the glass, and what I saw on the top shelf really caught my eye, this beautiful cobalt blue Pyrex dish. It is 222-R, and when I looked that up, I found, yes, indeed, this does sell pretty good on eBay, pretty well on eBay. There are the completed sales, so this is the exact amount it sold for, uh, about 17 bucks, 18 bucks plus shipping, sometimes more, but generally not less. So I think for $5, I should be okay buying that to make a decent profit. I think I'll list it at about 18 bucks plus shipping, maybe a little bit more. I went over to the smaller glass implements, uh, looking for anything that is named, anything that has a stamp on it, uh, a maker's mark, and this definitely did. It is a small glazed pottery jar with the lid on the bottom. It says Thompson. Uh, I could not figure out who that was besides someone named Thompson, but I like it. It's small. It's three bucks. This is one of those things that I'll auction off on my eBay store, and I will link below to that auction if you want to follow it. They're all being started at 99 cents plus shipping, and we're just seeing how the market reacts. Kind of a cool experiment for both of us to learn how these things get priced. This is a terracotta pan, I guess you'd say. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's for something that I don't know about. If you do, I would love to know. It has a cool stamp emblem right there there, but I could not find any kind of maker's mark or brand on the bottom. I know this stuff can be worth pretty good money. I want eight bucks in the store. Uh, I don't know enough about it, so I did leave it, although I think it is a pretty neat thing that takes some definite hard work and manpower to do. I found a, uh, it's a wooden box, hand carved on the exterior. Uh, the inside of it appears to be, um, is that milled? Is that the right word? It was uh, mechanically hollowed out which I think does lower the value. Signed on the bottom, Avram Vasile from Bucharest in, uh, what year was that again? In the early 80s, I forgot already. I'm just watching the, the video doing a voiceover. I looked it up on eBay. Uh, did find some work from the same person from, uh, from Bucharest, candlesticks, but they had not sold. So I said, I'm going to leave this. It looks a little bit too touristy for my liking. This is terrifying. Look at that. Hollow-eyed little praying doll. That's going to give you nightmares for a week. Uh, I don't know if it had eyes originally. It's uh, Fannykins is the, is the brand. Two of these little clay uh, ceramic praying children figurines. Uh, they both wanted about four bucks a piece. I looked it up on eBay, and this one does actually sell. You can see it right here. It goes for about uh, $7, $8 plus shipping. That is really not enough. I think that's the original right there. Bill Max, Solar Studios. Now I lay me praying boy. His eyes are not hollowed out. It looks nice with the eyes not being hollowed out. This also looked nice. It's a blown glass dolphin. That right there, it's a little bit, it's not a chip. I think it's a damage from where the, um, I think it's called a pontal is what they use to to mold or shape the glass rather three bucks really cool colors again the kind of thing i will auction off i don't think it's murano it might be i don't know i might say murano style in the uh, in the auction we see similar ones going for about 30 to 40 bucks including shipping which is pretty good i like the design i'm not sure if that nose damage might um it isn't damaged but that nose imperfection might uh, affect the price. So we're going to auction this off and see what the market says. I know when you auction things off, there's that risk that they're going to go for no money or a very small amount. But I think as you get a larger customer base by doing recurring auctions, you can see more success that way. And if I did have that success, I probably would have bought one of these things. Not those. Those are cool little coyotes or wolves. But this, this is hand carved. It's an elephant, uh, a white stone, quartz maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, the reason I did not buy it, though, is there are some very small chips on it. Chip on the ear, chip on the right tusk. It is not ivory. If it were ivory, that would be crazy. It's um, definitely a stone. I know sometimes they do make ivory elephant carvings. You can't sell ivory or you can't import it. There's some rules about it. I would just personally stay away from it. Walking over to the mugs, I've had a lot of luck here. Currently, it does look a little bit uh, dry. This is the one thing that did catch my eye, a handmade glazed pottery mug. The name says Johnson on the bottom. Could not figure out who that was. It looked a little bit amateurish. Uh, I didn't like how the handle was connected. It just seemed like the kind of thing I wouldn't want to own. So although it was cool and handmade, I put it back. 
I was checking this Poker Light Radica handheld game. These are great. I can usually get about 25 bucks for them um, on Amazon, you know, eBay a little bit less. It was missing the back though. If it did have that back battery component, I would have bought it. Uh, this one, this model I showed you goes for about 20 bucks on Amazon, so it wasn't worth buying to replace with uh, a replacement part. Now I'm checking out uh, anything else in these bins here. Uh, I pulled out some shampoo. Um, it was maybe it was a hair product, but there's a lot of like beauty products over there. Sometimes it's worth good money. These are not. They go for about nine, ten, twelve bucks a piece, uh, and that's really not worth it for what I'm doing. Over here we've got MKX. That's the Lincoln MKX floor mats. Looks like two up front mats and two passenger back seat max mats. Uh, if these were real and authentic and OEM, I'd buy them for 10 bucks. Heck yeah, I would. They'd go for about 70 or 80 bucks probably. Uh, but after a little bit of examination, you can just tell by how thin they are. There's no uh, branding from Lincoln. They're all just very cheap and chintzy. Uh, MKX is like a, I wouldn't say a ultimate luxury brand, but it's not like a, you know, a, a Honda. No offense to my Honda owners out there. For 10 bucks, that probably isn't worth that much. I mean, honestly, this is, I, it might even be counterfeit. Who knows? I'm not sure what the laws are, but I, I definitely passed on that. If it was real, though, I would have bought it. Speedo competition swim pack from the late 90s, early 2000s, I would guess. $7 in the store. A three pack of goggles, a chamois towel. And uh, what was the bottom one? A swim cap, a latex swim cap. Kind of cool. Uh, probably for the right buyer, I could get about 20 bucks for this. It might take a long time to sell, but vintage Speedo stuff does have a small market. But for $7 to hold onto an item to make four bucks profit after everything, it weighs more than a pound, so you have to ship priority mail. That's just a bad idea. This is a Holstein cupcake maker. I've seen these. I think they're called baby cakes. That's like the, <laughs> the one you're going to see a lot of. Uh, it takes me like an hour to open this. What it is, it's a small little six cupcake maker. They come in a dozen as well. It makes 12 cupcakes. Uh, very secure, as you can see me just absolutely struggling to open this. It's clean. Uh, I could have probably got 25 bucks plus shipping for this. They go for about 45 bucks new. Uh, there's some as listed as high as 60 bucks new on eBay. The kind of thing where you can't really find these easily. The Amazon listing is sold out. Five bucks in the store. The numbers do add up, um, but I don't really want to sell stuff like this. It's kind of big, kind of bulky, not the meatiest profit margins. So although it is interesting, you know, a little cupcake maker, I put it back on the shelf and this Chantal casserole dish i guess it is i have checked that out about a dozen times and it always goes back i just love the color here's a sealed millennials versus boomers little game uh so with these games always scan the barcode a lot of times they go for more than you think if uh if they're discontinued especially so this one i believe it is discontinued i will not sell them on amazon uh this small it isn't private label but it's like an independent company makes these that is ip claim uh, that, that, that's where you get IP claims. I was going to say IP claim heaven, but that doesn't make any sense. IP claims are terrible. So it will go on eBay, and I'll sell it as new for about 30 bucks. It weighs under a pound, should ship for about 4 or $5, and I'll make about 20 bucks profit. I went over to clothing to find something to shield that glass dolphin, and I found this Theo Katzman t-shirt. Theo Katzman is a member of the band Wolfpack. That I, I like that band a lot. And if he isn't a member, he's just associated with them. I think he might be from Ann Arbor. I know he might have gone to college here. He's a musician. He's a Los Angeles guy. Kind of a, uh, a fan base. These shirts sell occasionally, or his tour shirts sell occasionally for like 30 bucks on eBay. And I'll price it that way. I only pay 2 bucks in the store. Uh, and then I went over to the Coats and saw this. It's a cool Red Wings uh, pullover, but not worth much. This, though, this Eddie Bauer premium goose down jacket, I sold this exact same jacket, like, a three weeks ago? Like, literally, large, tall Eddie Bauer jacket. Here's the thing, though, and you're going to see this when I move the phone away, there is a big tear on the pocket, right there, you see that? So even though I could sell this for, like, 80 bucks, unfortunately, I had to put it back on the shelf. I saw this, though, it's an iconic 
Airly. I don't know, pullover quarter zip. Never heard of this brand before. Eight bucks in the store. I looked it up and it turns out that this exact same pullover quarter zip sweater coat type deal goes for about 30 or 40 bucks. New to me, uh, but always, you know, keep a lookout for that brand. Here's some other stuff. You know, it's called Fat Face. Again, never heard of this. Not sure why they named their brand Fat Face, but people like it. And who am I to judge? I barely ever do this much sourcing for clothes, but I was just on a roll today. So this right here is an Orvis vest. 15 bucks goes for about 30 bucks. Not the margins I'm looking for. There was some more Orvis gear, a chamois long sleeve button down for 10 bucks. Again, about five, 10 bucks profit. I like these things, but I'm not gonna buy them. What I do wanna buy are things that have a lot larger margin. And if you see over on the, the well, right here in front of you, this, this has good margins. Vintage polo button down, 100% cotton, uh, with a cool little arm badge on the side. It says Polo Sportsman. But here's the thing. What is this? The uh, take care of you washing tag, whatever that's called. That's on the outside? A lot of things on this shirt were, um, were signaling my counterfeit radar. So I had to figure out how do the buttons look? How do the seams look? How does everything look? And then find one that's sold on eBay and compare the two. The unfortunate thing is you're not always going to be able to find old things that sell on eBay. This is probably from the 90s, I would guess. I don't know. Based on the color pattern, based on the stitching, everything, I'd guess 90s. If you know, please, please correct me. I'm a novice at this, but I did find one. This one shipped out of the UK on auction for about 75 bucks, and it was all said and done. And look at that. There's the weird little tag on the bottom. The buttons are the same. Everything is exactly the same down to the patch. Uh, I thought they may have been imperfections. Nope, this is how it looks. Uh, and if that is fake, and if it is fake, which again, I highly doubt, nobody cares because they bid it up over $75. Over to books, nothing here that really caught my eye. I was just here yesterday looking at books. Uh, the Stephen King book goes in a lot. Everything else is either out of print or old prints. And I'll get like 10 to 20 bucks for every, uh, per book, not everything here. Um, so you know, that's just kind of how it goes some days. Some days you don't find any home runs in the book section because you were there yesterday. Over back to the outerwear, two new with tags, Eddie Bauer jackets. This one is the Mountain Parka, and the one behind it is the Travex jacket. They wanted $26.99 for that and $29.99 for this. So here's what I did. I did not buy either of these. And you're thinking, why? Well, they only sell for about 70 or 80 bucks. And that's a new condition. And those sales do not occur very often. Uh, so what I'm doing then is risking a return where it is no longer new. And if it's not new, then I'm just, you know, basically going to sell it for what I paid for at the thrift store. Um, I think for a business who only sells new clothing and they have, they're going for smaller margins and more uh, volume, this would have been great for you. But the way I sell things, just not really what I'm looking for. I'm trying to get more home runs than just um, sales like this that make me 30 or 40 bucks but are riskier and are going to happen less frequently. All I'm saying is when I get returns, it's usually on new stuff. Here is a Saturnian, whatever, it's the Silver Surfer. 1987 Marvel Entertainment Group. I have never seen a Marvel music CD, only a dollar in the store. Probably goes for about seven or eight bucks on Amazon, so there's not really a lot of profit there. But I'm just so curious about how this guy, Joe Saturini, or whatever his name is, uh, can, can get the ability to license a Marvel comic book character. So I bought it for a dollar. I'll listen to it and I'll report back to you guys how it is. Emperor Battle for Dune, an old PC game. This is not worth anything, right? Wrong! These old PC games, especially one that has so much uh, pop culture relevance right now with the Dune movies coming out, are worth pretty good money. This one sells for around 40 bucks. Some cases they're even charging shipping. Uh, I have the complete four disc set. The serial number is on the back of the case. It should go for about 40 or 50 bucks, uh, and that is no joke. Here's a Chelsea teddy bear made in Chelsea, Michigan. 
I picked this up because the tag says mink. And I thought for a second it might be a mink fur bear. Those go for over $100. It's not, though. It's polyester, just made to look like mink. This is worth like nine or ten bucks. What's worth a bit more is this stuffed rabbit. The stuffed rabbit uh, from Douglas, made in USA, cuddle toys. This goes for about 25 or 30 bucks, this brand of, of stuffed animal does. However, it is almost Easter, so I think what I'll do is list it at like 50 bucks and see if I can get somebody who really wants it for Easter. And if I can't get any sales in the next few weeks, I'll just um, I'll auction it off. I found some valuable toys, put them in the cart. This Buzz Lightyear toy, it's from the Disney store. Uh, you can tell because of the stickers and how it says Andy on the foot and on the back it says Disney Pixar. does not say Disney Store, but in this case, that's what uh, all the other eBay listings are saying. And then this, a Blossom Bell uh, Powerpuff Girls talking toy. This one is sold out on Amazon. I might list it there. I also might just list it on eBay. I'm not totally sure. The, uh, the Buzz Lightyear toy, I put that back on the shelf. It just took too much work to clean up. But this one right here, assuming, you know, I'll have to do some research uh, on the brand who sells this Spin Master to see if they make IP claims. But if I can sell on Amazon, I absolutely will. I should get like 50 or 60 bucks for it. On eBay, it goes for about 50 bucks, so it's still going to be a, a good buy either way. I went over to the plate section. I found this cool wooden bowl shaped like an apple or maybe a peach. Uh, those stains in there, I do not know how to recondition wood bowls, but I know it's possible and I want to learn. And I actually found two things in this thrift hunt that I'm going to try to repair. I want to keep this for myself. It's four bucks. Uh, I like wooden bowls. I've bought and sold wooden bowls before. This one is nothing special. I was trying to see if it was hand carved on the exterior. Uh, pretty much it looks like the interior was used some some sort of grinding tool. Uh, to make that but the exterior is sometimes hand carved or at least hand sanded and I think it was I didn't know what this next thing was though I had no clue if you know what this is please tell me Brookstone is the brand it's kind of shaped like a wine decanter uh, and then on top there's like a uh, I'm gonna knock it off right there there's like a little battery component and a button and like a metal straw that goes into it. It's made of plastic. It's not made of glass. It's very cheaply made, as is with most Brookstone stuff. That little Califon griddle caught my eye. It's worth like 15 bucks. But this, what the heck is this? I think maybe it's used for putting a liquid in. You press a button, that straw sucks it up, and then you press the button again, and it sprays it out. That's the only thing I can think might, might be. I don't know. I have no clue. I also got this butcher block, really, really beat up, three bucks, but I need it for my kitchen. And again, I want to learn how to fix this stuff. Can I just sand this down and put on some kind of wood conditioner and then it's good to go? Because if I can do that, these go for like 30 or 40 or 50 bucks um, on eBay, depending on the condition, depending on the wood. So again, um, we're going to learn how to do this. If you know, point me in the right direction. If not, you know, please subscribe, stick around. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys later.